Welcome to the Deep Dive, brought to you by HIVRNATestGuide.com. We're your trusted source for HIV testing with uh, more than 4,500 labs right across the U.S. Today, we're tackling a huge question, really monumental. What if we could actually stop HIV? You know, not just manage it for life, but truly stop it in its tracks. It's a powerful thought. And, you know, in 2025, it's not just hypothetical anymore. We're seeing uh, genuinely exciting progress, real steps towards an HIV cure. Absolutely. It feels like a real shift is happening. A profound one, yeah. Moving from just managing the virus to actively, uh, actively working towards its eradication. So that's what this deep dive is all about. We're focusing on these incredible real-life cases of HIV remission, stories that are, frankly, rewriting what we thought was possible. We'll unpack the science, the cutting-edge stuff behind these breakthroughs, and, importantly, what it all means for people living with HIV today. Right. And this is really for you, our listener. If you want to get up to speed quickly on the latest in HIV cure research and uh, testing, we've pulled together key insights from, well, the most reliable sources, including the ones that power HIVRNATestGuide.com. So you're getting the vital info. Yep, the surprising facts too. Our mission today, to walk you through these key stories, demystify the science a bit, and really highlight the practical side. By the end, you should have a really clear picture, maybe even a new way of thinking about the future of HIV. Okay, let's dive in. Setting the stage. The dawn of hope for an HIV cure. So first off, let's talk about this big shift in thinking. For decades, right, the focus was amazing treatments, RT, turning HIV into something manageable. Exactly. A chronic condition, not a death sentence. Incredible progress. But now we're talking about something fundamentally different, stopping it completely. And the most uh, compelling evidence for this possibility, it actually comes from stem cell transplants. Which weren't even designed for HIV initially, right? Well, not at all. These are really intensive procedures originally developed for life-threatening blood cancers, things like leukemia, lymphoma. But now, here in 2025, they're completely reshaping how we even think about an HIV cure. Mm-hmm. It's uh, really redefining hope. And this isn't just, you know, lab coats and test tubes. This has real implications, offering tangible hope for everyday people living with HIV in the U.S. It's opening doors, pathways we couldn't really imagine before. Two, real-life miracles, the patients in remission. Okay, so let's get into these stories. They're pretty incredible. The first person, the one who started it all, was Timothy Ray Brown. You probably know him as the Berlin patient. That was back in 2007. Huge news. The first person documented as cured of HIV after getting a bone marrow transplant. It really stunned the medical world. What was the key? What made it work for him? It came down to the donor. The donor had this rare genetic quirk, a mutation called CCR5 Delta 32. CCR5 Delta 32. Okay. Yeah. And what that mutation does is it essentially makes the immune cells resistant to HIV entry. So the new immune system Timothy received was naturally protected. But at the time, honestly, it was seen as this sort of medical one-off, a unique situation, probably impossible to repeat. But then it wasn't a one-off. It happened again. Exactly. In 2019, Adam Castillo, the London patient, also went into remission after a similar transplant. And then others followed. Yes. We had the Dusseldorf patient, (laughs) then Paul Edmonds, the City of Home patient, all received transplants from donors with that same CCR5 mutation. So what everyone thought was a fluke suddenly wasn't. Precisely. It showed it was repeatable. It turned HIV cure research from this distant, maybe impossible dream into something, well, strategic, a real target. And then the New York patient kind of pushed things even further. She absolutely did. A pivotal case. She was the first woman and the first person of mixed race to achieve a functional cure. And importantly, her treatment used a newer method involving umbilical cord stem cells. Why is that significant? Using cord blood. Well, cord blood is actually a more accessible source of stem cells. It doesn't require such a perfect match as adult bone marrow. So it opens up possibilities for a much more diverse group of patients. It was a real game changer, moving beyond that very limited pool of specific adult donors. Wow. Okay. And that brings us pretty much up to today. Almost. The momentum is still building. Just recently at CROI 2025, that's the big conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections. Right. We heard reports about two more potential cases, the Chicago patient and the Oslo patient. So potentially the ninth and 10th people. If their remission holds, yes, ninth and 10th known cases after stem cell transplants. And each case, you know, adds invaluable data. It really fuels the research. (sighs) Three, the science unpacked, how stem cell transplants work. Okay, these stories are genuinely inspiring, but let's unpack the science a bit. How do these transplants actually work to clear HIV? What's happening inside the body? 
Yeah, it's fascinating because remember, these patients weren't getting the transplant for HIV. They needed it for life-threatening cancers like leukemia or lymphoma. It was almost by chance, um, a fortunate chance, that their donors happened to have that CCR5 mutation we talked about. The HIV-resistant one. Exactly. So the mechanism is... Well, it's essentially like rebuilding the patient's entire immune system from scratch. Yeah. The donor stem cells wipe out the old susceptible immune system and replace it with a new one built from these HIV-resistant cells. Like a complete system upgrade. That's a good way to put it. The new cells just don't have the right doorway for HIV to get in. And there's another possible factor, too, something called graft-versus-host disease. Okay. Sometimes the new donor immune system attacks any remaining cells from the patient, including potentially any lingering HIV-infected cells. So that might help clear out the reservoir, too. So that CCR5 mutation, can we make that a bit more relatable? How does it actually block HIV? Okay, think of it like this. HIV needs to unlock a door to get into your white blood cells. That door, or keyhole, is primarily the CCR5 receptor on the cell surface. Got it. This rare mutation, CCR5 delta 32, it's like the gene that builds that keyhole is slightly different. It changes the shape of the lock. So the standard HIV key just doesn't fit anymore. It can't get in, or it's extremely difficult for it to get in and start replicating. So these patients basically got an immune system with redesigned locks on all the doors. Essentially, yes. An immune system that's intrinsically resistant to the most common type of HIV. Four, the reality check, risks and limitations. This all sounds incredibly promising, almost miraculous, but there's always a but, isn't there? We need to talk about the realities here, the challenges. Absolutely, and this is critical. If this works, you might ask, why aren't we doing this for everyone with HIV? The answer comes down to risk. These stem cell transplants are uh, profoundly dangerous procedures. First, you need intensive chemotherapy, sometimes radiation too, to completely destroy the patient's own immune system. That leaves them incredibly vulnerable. For how long? For weeks, sometimes months, and the potential complications are severe. We mentioned graft versus host disease that can be fatal. There are also risks of serious infections, organ rejection, long hospital stays. And if the transplant fails, the immune system might just not recover. It's incredibly high stakes. So this isn't a scalable cure then? Not for most people living with HIV. No, definitely not in its current form. The procedure is only considered ethical and medically justifiable when someone already has a life-threatening cancer that requires a transplant for survival. The risks are just far too high to undertake solely for HIV, especially when we have such effective and much, much safer lifelong treatments available. Which brings up a tough ethical point, doesn't it? It does. We have art antiretroviral therapy, which is amazing. It lets people with HIV live long, healthy lives. So is it right to risk someone's life with a dangerous procedure like this to cure HIV when their life is already well managed? It's a really complex ethical balance. And right now, the consensus is clear. The risk outweighs the benefit for people who don't otherwise need a transplant. V beyond transplants, new frontiers in cure research. Okay, so if these high-risk transplants aren't the answer for the majority, where does this leave us? What's the next step for HIV cure research? How do we make it safer? That's the crucial question. Researchers are learning so much from these transplant cases, they're dissecting exactly how it works biologically. The goal now is to figure out how to mimic that HIV-resistant effect, that CCR5 blockade or immune clearance, without needing the full dangerous transplant. That's where the real innovation is happening. Like gene editing. I've heard about CRISPR. Exactly. Gene editing tools like CRISPR-Cas9 are a major focus. Think of them as incredibly precise molecular scissors. They offer the potential to go into a patient's own cells and edit their DNA. For example, there's work like EBT-101 aiming to literally cut out the HIV DNA that hides in cells. Or another approach is to use CRISPR to disable the CCR5 gene in a person's own immune cells, basically giving them that resistance without needing a donor. So editing the patient's own system. Right. And beyond gene editing, researchers are also exploring other ways to tackle the hidden HIV, the latent reservoir. The virus that hides out even when someone's on treatment. Precisely. They're looking at things like non-coding RNAs molecules that can regulate genes and latency reversing agents. The idea is to either kick the hidden virus out so the immune system or drugs can kill it, or to lock it down permanently, silence it so it can never wake up again. So what's happening right now in 2025? Are there trials underway? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of activity, especially in the U.S. Major centers, Johns Hopkins, UC San Francisco, Emory, places like that 
are running clinical trials. They're testing safer ways to mimic that CCR5 effect, refining gene editing in patient cells, using those more accessible cord blood transplants we mentioned, and even combining stem cells with something called CAR-RT cell therapy. Easy. Yeah, it involves taking a patient's own immune T cells, engineering them in the lab to specifically recognize and kill HIV infected cells, and then putting them back into the body super targeted. That sounds incredibly advanced. It is. And there was another really exciting piece of news recently. Oh, yeah? A biotech company in California announced results for a patient who got a partial gene-edited transplant, so not a full immune system replacement. And this person has maintained an undetectable viral load for over a year off medication. It suggests we might be moving towards ways to directly target HIV within someone's body without needing that total system wipeout. Wow, that feels like a big step. It could be. And one more thing from CROI 2025 Gilead, a major pharma company, presented data on a combination approach. They're testing their long-acting drug, Lena Capavir, together with broadly neutralizing antibodies. BNABs. BNABs, like super antibodies. Kind of, yeah. They're engineered antibodies that can neutralize many, many different strains of HIV. The hope is this combo could lead to a functional cure long-term remission without daily pills. Six, what this means for you hope, and practical steps. Okay, this is a lot of complex science. Let's bring it back to our listener. Why should you care about CRISPR and BNABs and CAR T cells? What's the takeaway for someone navigating HIV today? The biggest takeaway, I think, is hope. These cases, these research avenues, they prove unequivocally that an HIV cure is biologically possible. It's not science fiction anymore. That provides a real tangible sense that we're moving towards a future where HIV isn't a lifelong condition. But we're not there yet. No, absolutely not. And that's the crucial reality check. Right now, today, the best standard of care for anyone living with HIV is antiretroviral therapy, RT. It's safe, it's incredibly effective, it saves lives, and it allows people to live long, healthy, full lives. These cure strategies, the trites, they're still experimental. They're not widely available outside of very specific research settings. So who might actually get into one of these trials in the near future? Well, as we said, eligibility is often still linked to people who have HIV and certain blood cancers needing a transplant. But it's broadening slightly. People willing to participate in experimental research, sometimes those who have rare matching donors, or who qualify for those cord blood treatments. It's still quite specific, but the criteria are evolving as the science gets safer. And regardless of cure research, monitoring is still key, right? Absolutely essential. HIV RNA tests, like the ones HIVRNATestGuide.com helps you access, are incredibly sensitive. They can detect the virus very early, sometimes just 7 to 10 days after exposure. And regular lab testing is vital for tracking viral load, making sure treatment is working, and of course prevention tools like pre p pre-exposure prophylaxis, remain critical for stopping new infections. They work extremely well. Outro. So wrapping up our deep dive today, Bruh. we've seen that an HIV cure isn't just a dream anymore. It's a real scientific possibility, proven by real people, and it's being actively chased down. That's right. And while RT is definitely the best option for management now, the pace of research is just incredible. Things that seem risky or rare today might genuinely become more mainstream options in the years ahead. All the knowledge we're gaining from these stem cell cases, it's directly paving the way for safer, smarter approaches, gene editing, antibodies, RNA therapies, personalized immune treatments. It's a truly dynamic time. And if you're listening to this and you're living with HIV, or maybe you're supporting someone who is, this research isn't just abstract science. It's deeply personal. Every single breakthrough brings us a step closer to a world where HIV can finally be cured, not just managed for a lifetime. Just imagine that. Definitely. So we really encourage you, talk to your HIV care provider, ask about clinical trials if that feels right for you, and stay informed by following trusted sources. Think Gilead's announcements, CROI conference updates, the FDA, the International AIDS Society. Keep an eye on those. Yeah, and patient groups too. Groups like AMFIR, the info on HIV.gov, and your local community organizations here in the U.S. They often have great updates on cure research. And of course, for confidential, fast, private, and affordable HIV testing anywhere in the U.S., remember to visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. That's HIVRNATestGuide.com. Stay empowered, everyone. Stay informed. And let's keep moving together towards that future where HIV is no longer a lifelong burden. 